and a very warm welcome to St. Michael's Church. Let's just take a moment to remember God's presence with us wherever we are as we watch this video, whether we're in the church or at home or wherever it is. Let's just remember God's presence with us. Thank you, Lord, that you are here by your spirit, wherever we are this morning, the situations that we face. Thank you, Lord, that you're not far away, but very close. Be with us now by your spirit as we come to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first hymn can be found on the YouTube page underneath the video. So please do listen to that and then join in the service again. So let's pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So in a moment of silence, let's bring to mind the things that we need to confess to God today. Things that have separated us from him and from one another. Things that we regret or are ashamed of. Let's just bring them to mind now. So we remember that God looks on us in great compassion and mercy not in condemnation. For he so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us together confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you, and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you and upon me. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As forgiven sinners, let's declare together the glory of God in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. With the collect, the special prayer for the 11th Sunday after Trinity. O God, 
you declare your almighty power, most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now our Gospel reading, after which Bill will be preaching to us. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the poll tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Sermon for Sunday the 18th of October 2020. So it's the 19th Sunday after Trinity. This is for St. Michael New Haven. Sermon is based on the reading from our Gospel, Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 to 22. Father, help us to imagine ourselves in this scene and to get the point of Jesus' strong words to those who find him very difficult to be near. For your name's sake. Amen. So I thought I could begin with some trick questions. Adam's mother had three children. The first child was named April. The second child was named May. What was the third child's name? Well, if you thought it was June, you would be wrong. It was Adam. If you listen to the question again, Adam's mother had three children. Another question. Before Mount Everest was discovered, which was the highest mountain in the world? And I guess you've got it. The answer is Mount Everest. So we come to between a rock and a hard place. Just about the only thing that the Pharisees and Herodians had in common was that they didn't like Jesus. The Pharisees were the guardians of the law. The Herodians were supporters of Herod, the Roman puppet king in Palestine and his successors. Putting aside their many differences for a moment, the Pharisees and Herodians come, to, come together with a question for Jesus that is designed to place him in an impossible situation. Verse 17, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not. The tax in question is the annual census or poll tax instituted by the Romans in AD 6. The Pharisees and those to their political right hate the emperor's constant meddling in the affairs of ordinary Jews. So if Jesus says, yes, pay the tax as lawful, he will immediately alienate the Pharisees and those to their right, and of course the poor, who were especially burdened by this particular head tax. If, on the other hand, Jesus says, no payment of such tax is not legally binding requirement on Jews, then Herodians will report him to the Roman authorities. They will offer evidence that Jesus of Nazareth 
is a dangerous instigator of sedition. The trick question is covered in a veneer of flattery. The Pharisees and Herodians preface their question with a reminder to Jesus that he has a reputation for sincerity, for truth-telling, for avoiding political manoeuvring. Verse 16, Teacher, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men. In one little sentence, the Pharisees and Herodians put Jesus between a rock and a hard place. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Get out of that one, they are saying. The clever leaders, however, have picked on the wrong person, as we well know. Jesus discerns the motive behind the questioning, why these two groups of people should be together asking him this question. He discerns malice or ill will, verse 18. But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, it's not a genuine question. It's a trick question. And Jesus has a trick or two or three up his own sleeve. And here they are. First trick. Show me the coin used for paying the tax, Jesus requests of his questioners. Verse 19. Interestingly, while Jesus' pockets are empty of cash, his opponent's pockets are full of cash. They have no problem producing and handing over the denarius in question. In other words, Jesus manages to live outside dependency upon the Roman structure of imperial economics, while the Pharisees and Herodians are deeply entangled in that system. Actually, it is they who need to work out if their involvement in the imperial power's economic and political system is really what God wants. They are the ones with Roman coins in their pockets, not Jesus. Ouch. The second trick. Whose portrait is this and whose inscription? Verse 20, Jesus asks. And he makes them say it. Caesar's. The coins in their pockets bear the head of the Roman emperor and announce in their title that that emperor is divine. Here's the Latin. Tiberius Caesar Div Augusti Filius Augustus Pontifex Maximus. Tiberius Caesar, august son of the divine Augustus, high priest. The coins bear a human portrait, and the hum human whose portrait they bear is declared to be a god. What are these Jewish leaders doing carrying around such images in their robes? The making of such images was forbidden in the Ten Commandments. And what are these Jewish leaders doing carrying around such images within the temple grounds, on such a holy site that Jewish leaders think nothing of living at ease with coins that speak blasphemy, that promote idolatry? The money in their pockets speaks the same accusation as Jesus in verse 18. You are hypocrites. And a third trick. When Jesus asks the question in verse 20, whose portrait is this and whose inscription, he uses a special word for portrait. Or at least Matthew uh, records it as such. It is the Greek word from which we get the English word icon. It means image. It is the same Greek word that is used in the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible, when God is describe it, described as creating humankind in his own image. Whose image is on the coin? asks Jesus as he looks his opponents in the eye. The coin bears a human image. The foreheads of Jesus' opponents also carry an image, a divine image. Jesus is saying, give to the pocket image whatever he dares to want. Give to the God in whose image you were created everything that has to do with you. Give to Caesar 
the things that are Caesar's, and to God what is God's. Verse 22. Jesus is not offering here a detailed statement about how Christians are to relate to non-Christian government. That debate comes up elsewhere in the New Testament. I've put some examples here, and it is not simple. What Jesus is doing here is exposing the fact that for so many of us human beings, even Jewish religious leaders who should know better, one wrong commitment often relativizes all other commitments. The Pharisees and Herodians, according to the chinks in their pockets, betrayed that their primary loyalty was to a merely human institution. Jesus is saying, look in a mirror. You have been made in God's image. Give your primary allegiance to him and let other allegiances flow from that. Here, on the Temple Mount of all places, get your perspective right. Yahweh is either Lord of all, or he is not Lord at all. So, brothers and sisters, what's in your or my pocket this morning? What are the primary commitments, beliefs, practical realities that guide our, day, our living on a daily basis? Is there an overriding commitment in your life that casts its long shadow over all other commitments, even your relationship with your Creator and Redeemer? Allow Jesus to hold a mirror before you today. Listen to him asking you whose image you see reflected. Is it not God's? Then here is a moment in the quiet as we invoke God's presence to allow him to refocus you, reform you, renew you, relieve you of hypocrisy and reignite your primary love for him. And take a moment just to recognise maybe that long shadow and to offer our lives back to a primary commitment to our Creator and Redeemer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Thank you very much for your sermon, Bill. Let's now affirm together our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, light from light, God from God, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we're going to have the hymn, which again is on the YouTube page under the video. Thank you, Lord, that through your word in the Bible,
table, we have your message presented to us to instruct us. We thank you for your church here in New Haven, across the diocese and internationally. We especially think of Martin and Bishop Bill through their teaching at St Michael's, keeping us focused on your presence in each of our lives. We pray, Lord, that with your spirit to guide us, you may use us mightily to comfort and care for those who are frightened as we face the second wave of the coronavirus pandemic. As we face the known and the unknown, help us to remember that only the promises and presence of you, Lord God, can ever give us the peace and hope that we need to keep going in hard times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for all people who work in the services around New Haven to support us. We especially lift up in prayer all those working within and having connections with the National Health Service. Help them with the rising pressure they will find in their lives during this winter time. Thank you that at the Queen's Awards to her people, so many were remembered and recognised for their work during the first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray, Lord, that local councils and the national government can work through issues arising in the different areas of this country. And may each of us listen and follow instructions from the authorities. Help us to be there, Lord, for those who feel their lives shaken to the core for all that is happening outside of their control. We pray for families struggling with a COVID-19 test for their children and facing self-isolation, waiting for test results to come through. And we pray for the safety of the older and vulnerable members of our community facing the daily hurdle of avoiding catching the coronavirus. We will now have a time of quiet to individually lift up to you all who we know who are ill in mind, body or spirit at this time. We especially think of those waiting for or who have undergone operations and medical treatment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray for those around the world who have found their lives swayed by storms or floods, by cyclones or earthquakes, by war or economic catastrophe, by locusts, and this year especially by the COVID-19 virus. We pray especially for Christians who suffer discrimination and persecution after such events. Please provide for them and help us to learn from their wonderful example of resilience, courage and faithfulness to you, Lord God. As the presidential election rolls along in America, we pray for your will to happen with regard to the next leader and their supporting team. May world leaders display humility, wisdom, and a leadership style for the good of the people in their country. We pray for all who have lost family, friends, and community through international conflicts in the world at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this week's National Prisons Week, encouraging us to pray for those who live and work in our prisons. Thank you that in last Sunday's Songs of Praise, we saw that, so if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. John 8, verse 36. Lord, support with your love, prisoners, their families and friends, prison staff and all who care. Heal those who have been wounded by the actions of others, especially the victims of crime. Help us to forgive one another, to act justly and with mercy. Walking with you, almighty God, heavenly Father, in your strength, with your spirit, now and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. 
And in response to the prayers and sing our next song, be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. As we come to the peace, I invite you to call to mind the people from St Michael's Church family who you would normally be sharing the peace with here in church or others that we want to draw into God's peace in our families, in our community or wider afield. So let's just call them to mind. So Lord, remembering those who, to whom we're close, who, who we want to draw into the, your peace, but from whom we are separated at this time. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, <clears throat> but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout this town, throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you now to join with me as the Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, we are not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and we shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Lord of all mercy, we, your faithful people, have celebrated that one true sacrifice which takes away our sins and brings pardon and peace. By our communion, keep us firm on the foundation of the gospel and preserve us from all sin through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Let us go in peace and joy to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please would you just listen to the, um, watch to the end of the video and then click on the final song for today.